Hello folks, Melinda Green here, and I want to talk about flexible polyhedra. So one of the things that I've done a lot with these pieces is to look for flexible polyhedra. Um, if you uh, don't already know, it, uh, it appeared for the longest time that once you closed any polyhedra, it became immediately rigid. So like in the case of polyhedra made out of triangles, as soon as you put the next to last one in, the whole thing is, is solid and won't, won't budge. And in fact, it's been proven that for any convex polyhedron, this is the case. It wasn't known for a long time whether non-convex polyhedra could ever be flexible. And then after a while, people actually did find some, and um, that's, that's pretty neat. And so since I had all of this polydron lying around with uh, collateral triangles, I thought I'd try to find some flexible polyhedra that had regular polygon faces. It was very difficult, but I did find a few candidates that looked interesting. And most of those turned out not to be flexible. And for ones that are, it's very difficult to prove that they are. So it's, uh, that's, that's almost a, another open problem. But I wanted to show you one of the best ones that I've created that I don't know whether it's a, a true flexible polyhedra or not. So after examining a bunch of different candidate flexible polyhedra that I found, I eliminated most of them as probably not being uh, truly flexible. But I still have one more that turned out to look pretty good. So that's what I want to show you today. This is based on a tetrahedron that has two notches cut into it on opposite edges. And you can see how loose this thing really is. It moves around quite easily and it appears to have two different degrees of freedom for the, for the motions that you see here. But each of those degrees of freedom, I think, is really just down to each of these notches having a single degree of freedom, this one and this one independently. Also, you might notice that it doesn't need to have all of these triangles. We can reduce it, and that will certainly help with, with any computational efforts to try to prove or disprove this candidate flexible polyhedron. What do I mean by redundant? Well, for starters, these tips are redundant because they're tetrahedra, which can't flex at all. So we can really just take these off and replace them with a, a single polygon like that. So let's just do that for all of these. So I've spent hundreds of hours my polygon. I just love the stuff. There's so many, so many applications for, for math and geometry nerds to just whip out and, and visualize. Okay, so here's the, the simplified version with these two degrees of freedom. And I found a further simplification that can be made if we decide to only use uh, one of the notches. So it's a, it's a simpler, less symmetric version, but it's still the same uh, polyhedron just with one notch. And that's this. So now I've replaced two of these hexagons with flat hexagon faces. That's about as reduced as I can make it, and you can see it still flexes very nicely. And one of the things that I found with some of these candidates is that you can sometimes tell when you examine it closely whether it's really uh, flexible by gently moving it and, and seeing if you can feel any catches and, and springiness or anything. But this, uh, this seems to be happy in, in all of the the different positions. Basically the motion is that this edge sort of swings back and forth. You can also 
flex it by putting it a little off center and squeezing the two edges together and you can see it pops that way or pops that way so you can see sort of the um, the billows like nature of how it flexes uh, which is one of the important features of flexible polyhedra that I won't go into at the moment. Anyway, that's pretty much it. What do you think? Is this a flexible polyhedron? Is it, is it truly perfectly mathematically flexible? Uh, might be difficult to find out, so I'm hoping that people will step in and try to uh, help answer this question. And that's it. Thank you very much.